Alright, so hey guys, Saxomatic Uncertainty here, and I'm back with the third video in the Advanced Car Tutorial Series. And today, we're going to be covering moving the wheels to correspond to changes in the elevation of the suspension and the extension of the springs. So, in order to do that, we're going to start by grabbing our springs and putting them under our general wheel object. Okay. And now that you've done that, we're going to put each of these wheels under its corresponding spring object. So RL goes under RL, RR goes under RR, and FL goes under FL. Um, and the reason for which we're doing this is that now we can reference uh, the locations of these wheels relative to their respective springs. So right, if the spring is higher, um, and it extends downwards to some distance, we can immediately just change the local Y position of this wheel and it'll uh, you know, reflect the change in the extension without our having to do extra work to sort of address the differences in positions if there are any. Um, and also, you know, this just makes it all relative to the actual elevation of the suspension as opposed to the center of the car, which could be a totally different height. So yeah, that is a pretty brief explanation of how that's gonna work. Um, so let's just get right into it. So now that we've done this, we can actually go into our suspension script and start writing the meat of this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a list to store all of our wheels, um, the meshes that is. And uh, additionally, we're gonna add a dictionary. Uh, and to explain why this dictionary will exist, um, it's just going to add a layer of abstraction. It'll make things a lot simpler for us uh, so that we don't have to change any of this existing code and so that we can do things more easily here. So now what we're going to do is we're assuming that these wheels and springs are one to one, uh, meaning there's one wing there's one wheel for every spring and there's one spring for every wheel and also that um, they're ordered the same way so that you know spring RR is in the same position as wheel RR within their respective lists. Okay, so now that we have that disclaimer out of the way, we're gonna write a for loop, uh, however rare they may be on this channel. Um, and we're going to iterate through the count of the springs list. Um, you can do I++ there if you're more confident or comfortable with that, I should say. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to add uh, each set to the dictionary. So we're going to say points.add. This takes the two objects just as separate arguments. And then we're going to pass the key and the value, which would be springs i as the key and wheels i as the value. And you can see that gets rid of the errors. And now we've done that. OK, so now that we have that out of the way, we're going to actually work on getting this uh, to happen. So as we iterate through this, we want to each time uh, we look at a different spring, get the corresponding wheel. So we're going to have a, uh, sorry, we're going to have a game object, I don't know why I said bool, um, called wheel, and that's going to correspond to the current wheel. And then we're going to have a boolean called found, and this is going to correspond to if we were able to find um, a wheel linked to the given key in the springs array. We always should find this, but that's just how the method works within uh, Unity. So I'm just going to follow their uh, system for this particular object. I should say C sharp, actually. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go through here. And f when uh, for each object, we're basically going to say points dot try get value. OK. Uh, and then we have to provide the key. So in this case, that's going to be the spring. And then the uh, reference to which we're going to output the actual reference, right? So basically, we're going to have a variable here. Um, and we're going to have this point to a uh, the given wheel within the dictionary. So in order to do that, we'll just say out wheel. Uh, and this resolves itself, you can see. Okay. So now for each of these uh, loops, we're going to have two possibilities. Uh, we'll address the possibility where it's touching the ground and then also where the suspension is not touching the ground, right? Um, 
So what this means is if this physics.raycast returns true, we're touching the ground, otherwise we're not. So I actually add an else statement here uh, and we'll add an if actually, we'll say found. Um, and then we'll get to this in a minute. Um, so if we're touching the ground, we want to set the position of the wheel, right? So let's go back here for a second. Uh, we want to set the position of the given wheel uh, relative to its spring, right? So basically, the spring ray casts down some distance. So suppose it ray, the, suppose the the spring is right here and it ray casts to this location. Uh, you can't set the wheel to be here, right? Because that's actually where the base of the wheel touches the ground. So we actually have to add one of the real wheel radius um, to this in order to account for this difference. So it'll actually be this Y transform will be negative whatever the distance of the raycast is plus the wheel radius. Um, so that should make sense just logically. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do here is we're going to say wheel.transform.local position. As I mentioned, this is why we've made these, uh, or made it parented. And then this is going to be equal to a new vector 3. Uh, and you could do this probably in a better way, but for the sake of simplicity, let's see, so we have that. We're going to address that middle part in a second. Local position dot Z. Um, and yeah, so now that we've set that, um, obviously we don't want to change the local position of the wheel uh, on the X or Z axes because, you know, we're only really addressing its movement along the axis of the spring in this case. Um, so there's no reason to be changing these two. We'll just keep them as they are. So yeah, now we're going to do um, the adjustment to the height. And to do this, we need the wheel radius, obviously, minus the hit dot distance. But there is a caveat here. So uh, because in your case and in mine, uh, in mine, there actually is, but in your case, there may be uh, differences in scaling between various objects within your car. You can see this is 0.2. Uh, you know, the car body, for example, is scaled up by a factor of roughly 25 in each direction, 24 in some axes. We can't really predict, uh, you know, on the basis of each model, how this value is going to look. So we're going to have to divide this by the wheel.transform.lossy scale. Uh, and this basically, oh, dot y, I should say, uh, because we're only normalizing the y-axis to the uh, differences in scale. But this basically is the scale of the object um, based on, you know, all of the varying scales of its parents. Uh, so you can get basically conversion to world scale. And uh, by dividing by this, we can convert world scale to object scale. And so that's what we're doing here. And this part is done now. So now we're going to deal with when we find an object and actually let me just count for that difference. We actually need to check if we uh, actually found a correspondence. And uh, if we didn't find a corresponding object, we can't obviously do that. So that's just basic error handling. Obviously, that shouldn't theoretically be necessary if you've done these, uh, you know, previous parts correctly. Um, but yeah, so now in here, we're going to do basically the same thing. Um, and if you want, you can actually change this to just be a vector three, like dummy variable, essentially. Um, and then you can adjust these elements uh, of the vector three, you know, inside of their respective parts, and then just change the transform to the vector three at the end. Um, but, you know, we're just going to do this. Um, but that would basically allow you to even remove the else if you could just have a bit up here where you is automatically assign it to that position. So anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, let's just finish this part. So sorry, local position dot x. Um, and then here, actually, we'll deal with this in a second. Also, uh, we have the wheel dot transform dot local position. Z. It's kind of annoying that it defaults to local Euler angles, but uh, anyway, so yeah, in this case, 
We have the wheel radius, same as before, but um, because the wheel is fully extended, the hit dot distance should just be assumed basically to be the maximum distance. So we're just gonna put in that max distance value we had from earlier. And now we're gonna divide this by once again, the wheel.transform.lossyscale.y. Dot dot um, and let's see what our issue is here. Oh, I'm sorry, I uh, didn't write wheel radius. I just wrote wheel. Yeah, that would have not worked at all. Okay, so now that this is finished, this should hopefully work. Let's run our code and let's see what happens. And uh, it looks like our car is, oh, I forgot to create our wheel reference. So we have to drag each of these wheels in. Remember, same order as in this list up here. So wheel FR is going to go up here. Uh, wheel RR is going to go here. Oh, I tried to spring FR down. Uh, and then element three would be uh, spring RL. So let's grab wheel RL. You can see now that we have all these in here. If we play this, we should see that our car behaves. No, we're still getting a null reference exception. Oh, my bad. Um, yeah, that's because we didn't actually instantiate our dictionary up here. So the dictionary is, um, you know, an actual object. And since Unity can't handle it like it handles this, we need to manually uh, create an instance of the object. So you can see now that we play it, it actually works perfectly fine. So you can see the car is uh, drifting and you should see that the wheels are making perfect contact with the ground. You can see, um, let's just decrease this damping factor so you can see a little bit what happens if I like pick the car up, for example. You can see the wheels are perfectly accounting for the changes in height of the car. Um, and so they're always making contact with the ground, except, of course, if you move the car up too far, you can see they lose contact. So, yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to achieve. Um, it's a really nice looking result, and you can see it's obviously very responsive um, because everything is using these variables. We've set, you can see if I were to uh, change the max distance, it changes in correspondence to that. Um, and so I can just raise and lower the suspension, uh, you know, basically as I please. And uh, it's perfectly responsive. And uh, yeah, so that was it for this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're probably going to cover the forward uh, forces and uh, some basic stuff like that. And then after that, we'll get into um, Ackerman steering. Uh, and sideways friction, some things like that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. If it was, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you in the next one.